Hi there, my name is Deanna Bedoya and I will be leading you through this unit on weight and weight management. Um, this is kind of an area that I really like to talk about because I teach about it in BBK 110, my human nutrition class, and I also teach about it in uh, BBK 417, which is my favorite class, which is a class entirely devoted to obesity, uh, adipocyte function, and weight management. So if this kind of material really interests you, maybe I will see you in one of those courses. Okay, so a few things to kind of frame our discussion on uh, obesity and weight management is that, yeah, here in Canada and across the world, obesity has become a major problem. Um, more than about 60% of Canadians are overweight and obese. Um, uh, the number is higher in the United States. It's higher in um, Britain as well and a lot of other countries too. Um, and the question is, how do we get here? <laughs> how do we get to a place where so much of our population is both overweight and obese? And I'll clarify the difference in a bit. Um, quite honestly, a lot of people want to jump to simple reasons for that. And they want to say, oh, it's because we eat too much sugar. Oh, it's because people just watch TV all day. Oh, it's because parents aren't educating their children properly. And quite honestly, I really want to, by the end of this, just shift that narrative because obesity is caused by a complex set of factors and our world is right now set up <laughs> to promote the behaviors that promote obesity. Food is shoved down our throats, food is everywhere, food marketing is very aggressive and everywhere we look there's lots of uh, encouragements to like sit and not move as well. So it's actually kind of not a surprise that our weights have gone up as much as they have. Okay, so we'll talk a little bit more about that. Some other take home messages is that uh, if we want to achieve and maintain a healthy weight, then we have to establish a healthy relationship with both food and physical activity. And this means that food is a positive concept in our lives. We enjoy eating, but we enjoy eating to a point that nourishes and supports our body. And we're not eating to kind of cope with emotions or due to stress or anxiety or those kind of things right where we're eating to nourish not to eating eating to cope okay and if you do please no judgment with that because so many of us do that um but ideally we want to shift towards using food you know like in a in a, in a more healthier way okay and we also want to make sure that we are um having good psychology around our eating behaviors and having kind of a good least home environment to promote good eating uh, and physical activity behaviors too if you go on the internet and you Google the words lose weight, chances are it's going to autofill behind that fast, quickly, <laughs> or something else, because that's what people are looking for. They're looking for quick solutions to weight problems if they do have, let's say, a higher size. Okay. That said, when it comes to long-term sustainable, healthy weights, we do recommend finding behaviors that are sustainable, that are realistic. I don't recommend using these crazy short-term diets that are like really aggressive and that make you miserable the whole time. Because if you hate your life while you're dieting, you are not gonna be able to keep that up. You wanna make sure that you love your life while you're changing behavior, okay? Or else you're not gonna keep those behaviors up. That's just kinda, of, that's human psychology <laughs> and how that works, okay? I keep using the term obesity, but I just want, so I just wanted to use this slide and this concept of body mass index to define obesity. Obesity is technically uh, a level of fatness above which uh, it, it's causing problems in the body. So a level of fat mass that compromises mostly physical well-being. Okay, how do we determine that? Quite honestly, we typically use body mass index, though it's not the, it doesn't give you a full picture of our size. Um, when we do use body mass index and we determine body mass index, it's not written on here, but body mass index equals your weight in kilograms, not pounds, over your height in meters, not uh, inches, and that's squared. Okay, so like mine is 1.7, for instance, for my, my height. Okay, so if you were to put those um, values into this equation, or just, again, find an equation calculator on the internet, um, you're going to get a number. And that number, if it's between 18.5 and 24.9, we would typically classify someone as, I don't love the word normal, but we might say normal range or healthy range. Anything above 25 is considered overweight. Okay, 
Uh, we might say pre-obese, although these terms aren't always used, is 25 to 29.9, and anything over 30 is considered obese. That said, we have to be careful using BMI alone to determine our health. Okay, so for instance, Arnold <laughs> in this picture, when he uh, won the Mr. Olympia contest back whenever that was, um, he had a BMI of 30.3, which would technically have classified him as obese. The problem with BMI is that it doesn't differentiate between body fat and lean mass. Okay, so that's something you want to consider as well when you're determining your size. Okay, that said, we use BMI because it's just easy. Okay, and it's easy to put people into categories and it typically works well for like population level data, not as good for individual level data. Okay, so now we know what the difference between overweight and obesity is. A few more things about obesity in Canada is, as it says here, that the prevalence of obesity has increased significantly. Approximately two thirds of Canadians have a BMI over 25 and 30% of Canadian children also have a BMI of over 25 as well. Okay, the rates of overweight and obesity are higher in our indigenous populations. Um, it's there's not one reason for that. There might be genetic reasons for it, but it might also have to do with like the legacy of residential schools. It might have to do with the types of foods that are available in indigenous populations. Um, there's a lot more processed foods that are available in like remote areas of the country where some indigenous people might live. It's not a simple kind of thing to piece apart why it's higher in indigenous individuals, but it is worth noting, okay? Many organizations like the Canadian Medical Association, like the American Medical Association as well, now recognize obesity not as a risk factor, but as its own disease because it has its own complications and its own risks within itself, not just because it causes other things. Okay, so it's a big deal. That's basically the, me the, the message there. This slide, it's kind of the same slide twice. And it's looking at the prevalence of um, overweight and obesity. Uh, yeah, overweight is in um, blue and obesity is in um, uh, orange. <laughs> I think that's orange, according to different types of um, studies that were done. Okay, so the ones on the left here, these are from self-reported studies. And you'll notice when I use self-reported data, the prevalence of um, obesity is a lot lower compared to if I use measured data. So if I ask people, what's your height and your weight? I'm gonna get lower values for BMI than if I would actually measure those because we lie or we forget or et cetera. Okay, so I always wanna look at measured data. Okay, but in general, whether you're looking at self-reported or measured data, BMI, or I should say obesity, has increased significantly since just even 2000. Okay, and that's coupled a little bit with a decrease in the amount of overweight, which basically tells us that some of these individuals that were previously overweight might now have shifted towards obesity. So like we keep saying, we're just trying to establish how big of an issue this is here in Canada. So why do we care? Why do we keep talking about obesity? Why is it such a big deal? Obesity increases the risk of a whole number of both physical, mental, and social issues with respect to an individual's health. So as a big starting point here with this discussion is that obesity significantly reduces life expectancy by up to 14 years. And it is responsible for a lot of premature deaths because in part it increases the risk of, of CVD. And I should clarify here, type two diabetes. Usually when we say diabetes, we mean type two, okay? It is also associated with a higher risk of a lot of types of cancers, specifically colon cancer and breast cancer, uh, gallbladder, kidney, a lot of different um, cancer risks too. So all of those diseases I just talked about, those are something we would call a sick fat disease. So diseases associated with like kind of the physiological impacts of having too much fat on the body. Having a lot of fat on the body also compromises like our mechanical health of our body. So for instance, individuals with obesity might have a lot of joint problems. They might have um, 
sleep apnea. They might have problems with snoring. Um, uh, PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, is also higher with individuals with obesity. So it poses a significant risk to physical well-being, but also can compromise an individual's mental well-being, and like I said, can have social implications as well. There's also risks with a very low uh, body weight too on the other side of things. So individuals with a very low body weight might be at higher risk for certain deficiencies. Um, they might have a very low protein diet if their body weight is very, very low, and it might sometimes be associated with illness, and it might sometimes be associated with, um, in particular, the eating disorder, anorexia as well. So that said, some people are just naturally thin. I should mention that. Some people are just naturally thin, and being naturally thin, if you're eating well and exercising, I wouldn't worry about that, okay? But um, if that is achieved through uh, ways that are otherwise unhealthy, that is something we'd want to explore a little bit more too, okay? So when I talk about types of body fat, we don't all carry the, our fat the same way. And not all fat is bad. We need body fat. Body fat is a good thing. It helps to insulate. It helps to protect. It helps to store calories. It helps to store um, uh, vitamins as well. Um, and this is all something we might call essential fat. Okay, about 3% of a male weight and about 12% of the female weight is uh, this essential fat. Okay, so it's not something we would say is a problem with respect to um, health. Okay, risky fat is when we start building a lot of extra fat. Um, like, and not just like, you know, if you have 15% body fat as a woman, I wouldn't worry about it. I have way more than that myself. But when we start getting too high up there, then, like I said, complications can arise. Okay, so risky fat, this is non-essential. And especially if we're storing a lot of that around our uh, abdominal tissue, so around like our intestines and the associated organs around there too. That is the type of uh, fat pattern that significantly increases the risk of a number of comorbidities, okay? That said, it's important to mention that we all deposit fat in a different way and you can't like decide where your fat goes. <laughs> your body's just going to put it on in a way that's determined typically by genetics. Um, but in general, just kind of a message here is we want to make sure we're not getting too much extra calories in our diet, which will add extra body fat to our body potentially to a risky level okay but i have to be careful here because i don't want people to become obsessed with having some extra body fat body fat is okay it's more that once it gets beyond a certain level and it's hard to know what that level is but chances are if you're eating well and you're exercising and you're otherwise healthy you know you're going to achieve a size that is going to promote health i mentioned earlier that and maybe I should have put the slide earlier, but anyways, I mentioned earlier that obesity is associated with a number of comorbidities, and the big one is type 2 diabetes. One of the reasons we see so much of an increase in type 2 diabetes in our society is because of the increase in obesity. The exact pathway from obesity to insulin resistance and then to type 2 diabetes is not fully understood. But we do know that there is a significant risk there, okay? And, and diabetes, type 2 diabetes, is a risk for cardiovascular disease. So obesity is a risk for cardiovascular disease, and obesity promotes type 2 diabetes, which promotes cardiovascular disease too. So it's really um, kind of this, <laughs> you know, hot pot <laughs> of uh, increased risk of disease when an individual has a lot of uh, obesity. Okay. If you want to know whether your weight is uh, a healthy one, one that is potentially promoting more health than disease, there are a number of ways you can look at your uh, weight. None of these are perfect. They all have kind of their issues. And I do recommend going and reading in the textbook a little bit more about each of these, but I'll just give you a basic summary of each of them right here. Height and weight charts, these are so-so. These are like what you might have seen at your doctor's office. Okay, where it compares your height and your weight and it tells you kind of where you should be for your age sometimes. These are okay. They don't give you a total understanding of your um, of body fat. Okay, hydrostatic weighing. We might do something called underwater weighing where we put some people underwater <laughs> and watch how much volume they displace and use that to help calculate body density. 
which helps to calculate body fat percentage. So hydrostatic weighing, underwater weighing, or um, something called the bod pod, where we measure air displacement, these all help determine body fat percentage, which is a good measurement of um, the risk your weight promotes. Okay, um, but they're not easy to do, or they can be kind of expensive. A little bit cheaper of an option, but has some like method issues, like we can sometimes screw up accuracy, is skin fold measurements. I don't know if you've ever had this done. Oh. <laughs> really good but if I you might have had this skin fold measurements where people go with calipers and they like measure how much fat they can pinch at different sites in the body and then they plug that into an equation and determine your um, something called the sum of skin folds which gives you a measure of body fat percentage okay circumference measures like um, we might do um, a waist circumference around pretty like just kind of around your hip some of your hip bones um, or like kind of your navel it kind of depends on the person we usually measure around that area and uh, we use that plus BMI to determine if someone is obese sometimes okay electrical impedance you might have this on your bathroom scale or you might have like used these things in your hands at the gym that basically send an electric current through the body that can help to measure how much water there is in the body and using that knowledge we can kind of do an estimate of body fat percentage okay uh, scanning methods like DEXA or an MRI, these are really great for body composition, okay? Really great for determining how much fat versus muscle you have, which is a better determinant of your health risk, but these methods are expensive, okay? But the simplest and most broadly applicable is BMI. It's not great, like I said, for individual measurements. It gives you an idea, but it doesn't give you a full picture. But like, you probably know. You probably know if you are consistently consuming more calories than you burn and if you have a lot of fat mass that is maybe um, heavier than, than might promote health. Okay, so no judgments. <laughs> but uh, my point here is that these measurements can help, but you probably don't even need a measurement to help you determine what your size is and whether it, it promotes health or maybe hinders it as well. Okay, I just really need to take a step back here and, and again talk about this concept of judgment because I know when we start talking about body weight, you know, there's a lot of body image things that can come up. There's a lot of like self judgment that comes up, and I don't want that to happen to you. Okay, this isn't about judging yourself or feeling bad about yourself. I've definitely struggled with body stuff myself, and you know, I know how all encompassing this is. Okay, so we're just providing an overview of this topic, but it's not meant for you to feel bad about yourself. It's more meant for you to have an awareness of how weight affects our health and to see if that is an area that maybe requires some loving, compassionate focus. That said, uh, in the next unit, we're going to come back and talk a little bit more about what determines your weight. And then following in other videos, we'll talk about how to achieve and maintain a healthy weight. I'll see you then.